time again, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of MASL Insider, telling you stories and introducing you to players from around the world of the Major Arena Soccer League. In case you don't already know me, allow myself to introduce myself. My name is Christian Philemon, a.k.a. Philly, and that name does not derive from the fact that I'm from the city of brotherly love. Condolences to all you Eagles fans out there. On today's episode, we have one of the most imposing and intimidating keepers that this league has ever seen. He has seen success ever since entering into the MASL, having been named to the all-rookie team in 2019. Halfway through his fourth season in this league, He's already set career highs in wins and save percentage. Quite the accomplishment. Our guest and I have also had the privilege of working together last season on the MASL Chill Cave. His nickname is The Wall, but you all know him as Willie B. And of course, I'm talking about the man, the Milwaukee Way's very own William Bonahenny. Willie B, welcome to MASL Insider. Philly, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. It's been a minute since we got to hang out in this capacity. I know you and I chat a bit, but it's good to see you face to face, Willie. Yeah, I can, your your beautiful face. I was getting, I was missing it a little bit. So it's always a good, it's always a good time to see your face, man. Not just the face for radio, and you know what they say: flattery will get you everywhere, my friend. <laughs> I mean, first and foremost, like, how you doing? How are you feeling? I know you took a bit of a knock in that game against St. Louis. Like, talk to us. How are you feeling? I, I mean, I feel good. Uh, glad to be back home. We had a like a four day road trip. Um, yeah, picked up a little bit of a groin injury that's been kind of nagging throughout the season, but I'm in great hands with Ricardo, our athletic trainer. So uh, I'll be back on the field uh, so before you know it. All right. I mean, as I said to Jamie Lovegrove, this league is better when we have players such as yourself gracing us on the turf. And I mean, speaking of that game, by the way, congrats to both you and Ray. I mean, getting a rare shutout in this game, that's that's amazing. Incredible accomplishment. Like what went through your mind when that buzzer went off? I mean, it was a, a bunch of emotions. Uh, you know, I think that was like the 20th shutout in MASL history. So being a part of history is always awesome. And it was really cool to see, like, having our, our other goalkeeper, our second goalkeeper, our, you know, part of our two of our three, you know, really be a part of it and be integral. And he made up, came up with 11 saves in the fourth quarter to preserve it, you know, and it was it was a really awesome situation for us to celebrate it together. And it as a team, you know, we had a minute left and we have our, our guys who played, you know, the whole game and really – block and dive and do everything to preserve it, you know, and, you know, you don't really have to do that. We already, you know, at that point, the game's already over, but they really uh, stuck together. And we, you know, I felt that was a very team, like that's a a great team uh, accomplishment for us, you know. Yeah, Ian said it during the post-game interview, how a shutout is very much a team effort. So, I mean, kudos to you guys. Panda and I were watching that, and obviously we're not, we're, we were we were neutral. We know you, we know Ian, we know a couple of the guys there. But, I mean, it was fun, and we were certainly, not to cheer against the ambush, but at that point, there's they're obviously not going to get in the game. So we were thinking, oh, my God, can they get a shutout? This is the equivalent of a no-no in baseball. Like, this is exciting. Like, oh, my God, look at that shot. Look at that save. So, no, it was, it was a very exciting game for, for even, like, the neutral spectators to be a part of. Yeah, I, I don't think, like, people realize, because if you're, if you're, like, a pure soccer player, like, shutouts are common. So, you know, you think of a shutout, they're like, okay, well, um, why is that such a big deal? But it doesn't happen often. So to be a part of it is pretty cool. Um, you know, once again, I, I don't really think it's me or Augie. It was the whole team. You know, even coach at the fourth fourth quarter at the time, Ali said it doesn't happen often. So we owe it to the defenders. We owe it to the goalkeepers to kind of to get it get it done, and we all did it. So it was it was amazing. It was, it was one of uh, one of the coolest fe- feelings in sports to to be a part of that. Hundred percent, you said it, like the twentieth shutout. I mean that these things are, are very rare. Congratulations to you guys, and obviously to the success your team is having. We're going to talk about that momentarily, but we're here to chat about you. You grew up in the Flower City, Rochester, New York. Talk to us about life growing up in upstate New York. Uh, I love Rochester. You know, it's it's cold, but it's good. It's calm. I'm a calm guy. Um, you know, and it's actually a lot like Milwaukee. Um, very grew up in the suburbs. Um, I feel like Milwaukee's pretty, pretty suburban based as well. And, uh, you know, just familiar with indoor soccer growing up, playing 
um, just because it's you have to be inside about four months, five months out of the year. And, uh, you know, following the Lancers, going to a couple of games. So that was, uh, you know, and I remember seeing a lot of uh, the Rhinos players back in the day when they were in the off seasons, they used to play for the Philly kicks. They used to play for um, a couple, I know they played for Buffalo, but I think that's before my time. But I remember watching, uh, just what, pulling on uh, Fox soccer channel and watching, uh, just saying, hey, I know that guy um, during the winter. And, and it was it was cool. That was kind of when I was in, introduced to it. So, um, but yeah, really calm. Love it. Can't, can't really complain about it. Well, you didn't just play soccer. I mean, you played lacrosse as well. And lacrosse, I mean, that's a very northeast sport to play. I'm out here in Southern California. Don't really see too much lacrosse around here. I mean, arguably, lacrosse is the oldest sport in North America, dating back to the times of the Native Americans. Now, what made you choose lacrosse and soccer as opposed to the usual suspect sports like like football, basketball, and baseball? Um, so football, my dad wouldn't let me play, um, basketball, I'm African, so I'm not good at basketball. I was just never, I, could, I just never put any of it, you know, everybody, you know, name your favorite African basketball player. You can maybe say Giannis, but we're not, we, we're not there yet. So we, uh, I just never, it never wasn't there. I'm not, I wasn't super tall. So, um, but lacrosse, it was kind of just something that kind of coincide. Uh, my neighbor was, uh, big big in lacrosse uh, at the time so he just gave me a stick he knew I was fast so I just kind of pick up the ball and run to the other side of the field and just like drop the ball and then they'd pick it up and play and I'd get off the field you know so I was I, I was I was good at defense and good at running but I wasn't like I didn't have all the state skills so you know I was uh I can't say like I was scoring 100 goals I would just kind of play defense and then and run and then give the ball away so um but no, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I, I was a big, like my dad grew up playing tennis. So I'm, I'm decent at like racket sports, but I was never like really good. And, uh, you know, I like volleyball and stuff like that, but it was pretty much soccer all the time. At what point during your high school career, did you realize that soccer was going to kind of carry you all the way up to, up to, and through college? Um, I mean, everybody has that dream of wanting to go on and being a professional soccer player. Uh, and then I think what really happens is life kind of hits you and it hits you at certain times and you kind of have to make a decision. Um, I kind of, there was, you know, ups and downs. I didn't know that I would still be playing soccer. I kind of put myself in a position where I could go on and play and uh, indoor soccer made a lot of sense for me um, in sense uh, with the timing and everything. But, you know, from a young age, I always wanted to play. Um, I always had a plan. I always, you know, everybody says, you you know, thinks you're going to go at 10 years old, going to go play for Chelsea. And, you know, at the end of the day, you just, you just want to play, right. You just want to go and be able to play. And it's just one of the most amazing opportunities to meet so many people and experience so many things. You know, we wouldn't be here today. Philly wouldn't be friends if, you know, I didn't have, so it's, it's playing at any level is, is amazing. So you mentioned how, you know, you were speedy when you were playing lax and doing all that other stuff. Now, you, you're, you're a keeper. And then there's another question I want to allude to when you, during your time in college. But during that time period, like, why keeper as opposed to maybe being like a defender or a midfielder or, heck, even a striker? Like, what was so uh, appealing about playing in between the pipes? Uh, I didn't have to run. <laughs> that was it. I mean, I can't even lie. I can tell you the story how it started. I remember I was – his name is Spencer Durlin. He was a high school keeper. Um, I was supposed to just play one half. And it was an indoor uh, arena where my club actually trains now. And I played the first half. I was doing really well. And he just, oh, I'm going to take you out half, halfway in the second half. And he just took me out. I started to cry. And then I went home. I was like, you know what? I don't have to run. And I still get to play the whole game. So why don't I just keep doing this? So that's kind of where it really started. It wasn't, it wasn't anything like I wanted to do it. It was just kind of like a trade off. And to this day, it's a great decision because I don't like running still. So <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Not the answer I was expecting, but I mean, that's, Oh yeah, no, there's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter. I'll tell you how it is. And I don't like running. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a New Yorker. We're fellow New Yorkers. I appreciate yeah. the blunt. <laughs> straight even, at, even at 100. Yeah. No, no doubt. Now, <laughs> You said your dad didn't let you play football growing up, but 
while you were at Buffalo State, and I pulled this off the, during your, your, your bio from your NPSL days, but while you were at Buffalo State, you were actually the backup kicker on the football team. First question, is that in fact true? And if so, how did that come about and did you get any snaps? Um, yeah, so the last week of – like our season was over, they had a bowl game, and their kicker went out. And um, they took us and the other goalkeeper um, as, you know, on onto the team. And we kind of did like tryouts and stuff. Ironically enough, I had a groin injury. I think the same groin injury I, I did. So I didn't, I didn't take a snap. Um, and also I didn't know in practice, you can't hit someone. So I went because of my whole, the whole week I was like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to do the kickoff. And I'm going to be the first person to hit the runner. <laughs> so I went, kicked it good kick and i just start sprinting as hard as i can i remember was like what the heck is this guy doing so i just go and i just lay the runner out and then i think that just ruined my chances uh, um of actually getting on the field but um it was funny i no, i did do it it was it was i did it for about two two three weeks it was fun it's it's different right i i have a lot of respect for kickers because you start your run and you may make your plant before they even the ball's even like put on the ground so it's not like, oh, I can hit this shot. Everybody thinks you can do that. But when you also have 300 pound guys running at you as well, it's not it's not as easy as it is. So that's a good that's a good find. That's a that's a little gem that I that not a lot of people know that I was technically a college kicker. I was going to enter the draft, too, but it oh. didn't work out. Breaking news on MASL Insider. That's why we love doing the show, folks. You get to hear gems like this from Willie B. This is this is good stuff. I'm already having a blast. I didn't anticipate anything less, but this is already fun. <laughs> uh, so so after Buffalo State, you end up landing on the legendary Lock Rochester Lancers. Now, obviously, you grew up there. You knew about them, but how did that opportunity come up? And you know, tell us about your experience to, uh, with the Lancers. Yeah, so I actually started. Um... So when I left Niagara University, I actually decided I wanted to to go play indoor. Um, I think I was like 18 or 19 at the time. So I went to try out at in Harrisburg. So this was like four years before I actually played. I think Tariq was a coach. And then I went and tried out for the indoor Lancers in 2016, 15. And um, I that's where I met Doug. And then Doug was like, hey, you have talent, but I think you should go back to school because um, I had two years left. So I did go back to school. And then after they had an MPSL team, and that was where I kind of reacquainted myself with Doug and he remembered me and, you know, kind of had, uh, you know, kind of started my career off there. And I always tell Sam, soccer Sam, like he was, he kind of, his goal was f to start these teams or to give local guys a chance to go on to the next level. And that's, I was kind of, uh, you know, a product of that. Um, so we did that and I'd had a really good outdoor season. Um, I think we were it's like 14 all MPSL and, you know, we, we were on, we were on scored on for like 1100 minutes, something like crazy, which I can't take all the credit for. That was also like our defense as well. Um, and, uh, it was just like a great experience. It really Doug taught me how to be a professional and you know what you know that like killer mentality and that that will to win and putting the extra work and all that stuff so it was it was in a, like a super probably the most important chapter of my professional career was those two years with with the Rochester Lancers soccer sam i mean shout out to him got nothing but love for him he uh, was kind enough to send panda and i some of his amazing pastries and uh just just hearing soccer sam's name like pavlov's dog i instantly think pizza and donuts it's it's the fat kid that yeah. lives inside me <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta get the sauce man no 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 offense to sauce in wisconsin and pizza in wisconsin i'm we're in utica and i already am telling my friends who are going like hey bring me some salvatores because there's no pizza like there's no pizza like new york pizza so um, but yeah, get some sauce. See if you can order some sauce. Get some sauce and, and, and get it there. It's, they they got some good sauce, so um, they got everything good. If you're ever in New York, yeah, that, I I need to do that. I mean, I'm in LA, and I mean, not to be uh, LA pizza sucks. I mean, I'm just gonna be blunt and put it there. Like, there's places that say they're New Yorkish, and yeah, kind of. I mean, there's some pretty decent spots, but nothing like 
a New York pizza. It doesn't matter if you're in the city, Binghamton, Rochester. I mean, you got people with those amazing Brooklyn recipes uh, passed down from generations. I miss New York pizza. Chicago, man, I'll take, man. but L.A. pizza, meh. <laughs> Sh- Sh- Chicago is, is is a pie, you know. It's just New York pizza just has it. And Yo, yeah. I miss it. When I was in Harrisburg, I missed it. Um, here, no offense, Wisconsin, and not really good pizza. You know, when I go home... I literally go to Wegmans, hmm. then I go to Salvatore's, then I go see my mom. Oh, <laughs> she's <laughs> still on that list. <laughs> those, are, those are my three. My mom's three because I gotta go get my. I gotta go to Wegmans. I gotta get my pizza. Oh uh, well, then you could be just like mom. Third time's a charm. Come on. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> um, no, it's it, it's uh, Sam. Sam's great, but yeah, no, it was it was a good experience, and it kind of put me into the next step with the uh, kind of me next step with Harrisburg and it was it was a good it was everything everything I needed uh for a, a kid who went to uh a smaller school and needed that like that little boost so absolutely now for those that are geographically challenged you're in upstate New York Harrisburg is the capital of the Keystone State capital of Pennsylvania what's the distance between Rochester and Harrisburg for those who don't know probably like f- I think four hours I got I would get there in four um yeah, so it was it was a drive away. It was definitely it was a it was a quick drive. Huh. Um, four 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 hours in Los Angeles gets you from the valley to Santa Monica. So <laughs> in your yeah. neck of the woods, I mean, you're probably yeah. doing seventy miles at in, in in less than an hour. I don't yeah. know what that's like anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because I always every time I even when I'm here too, I say I'm from New York, but Western New York. So when I'm when I was in Harrisburg, I say I'm from New York, and same thing here. And they say, "Oh, I've been to Brooklyn once. It was so fun." I say, "Well, listen, in Harrisburg, you guys are closer to New York City than I'm as to New York City. I was six hours from New York City, and I was I think Harrisburg was like five hours from New York City. So it's always <laughs> funny. To, it's always funny to have to give that disclaimer. I kind of want to <laughs> get a shirt like I'm from New York, but upstate New York." <laughs> jokingly and i say this obviously tongue in cheek because i have a lot of friends in upstate new york but growing up in the boroughs we always used to jokingly refer to anybody who lived north above the bronx was canadian <laughs> yeah i get the, i get the canadian stuff all the time but <laughs> obviously but actually now I embrace it. i'm like oh, i'm by toronto yeah i'm like now i'm from toronto whatever so, <laughs> so you talk about harrisburg you you spent three seasons there 2019 you were all msl rookie team your time with the heat Let's hear about that. Talk to us about your time in Harrisburg. You know, I think it was also something that I, I needed and it was important for my career. You know, you have Pat, who's like one of the greatest teachers of this game that, you know, he just knows everything. You know, all the rules, you know, everything. He made sure you knew everything. And um, it was a it was a good experience. You know, I, I love the people of Harrisburg. Uh, Carl was, was a good friend of mine. Kevin was great. Um you know, you had the, the the Kellys, you had uh, the athletic trainer, um, Kylie. You know, everybody was like a family out there, and it was uh, it was tough to go. Um, you know, especially I keep in touch with the players and a lot of the players and a lot of the fans as well. You know, because they were it was very it was very tight knit. You, um, I, I, I chat with Matt. I think Matt and you were the only players on on Harrisburg that I've had the opportunity mm-hmm. to chat with. Obviously, I want to expand that that portfolio, but everybody seems nice. I mean, that ugly Chris, that ugly Christmas sweater jersey they had was awesome. I ended oh, up so amazing, yeah. winning one of those. And as you can see there, I got the Harrisburg Heat yeah. represented as I'm trying to represent every team in this league. And obviously, right next to that, you see your Milwaukee Wave. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. I another but love for the Harrisburg Heat. Now you're in Milwaukee right now. You found your way to Milwaukee, which is probably the the blockbuster trade during the off season. Now, how have you adjusted to being in a new city, a new environment? You get out to any Bucks games? Like, what's life like in Bruce City? Um, yeah, I did go to a Bucks game, um, and that was awesome. That was my first NBA game. Um, wow. Life's different. It's different, you know. Um, I do a lot of coaching here, which keeps me busy, um, which I enjoy. I like keeping busy i like being around the community you know knowing the community and kind of knowing when you go out there and playing like what you stand for who you're playing for so um that was very important for me and uh i'm I'm enjoying it a lot you know i'm getting finding i feel like i'm finding my niche um in the city and in the town and you know i feel i feel comfortable um so it's uh 
it's I'm, I'm happy. It's I couldn't be happier for of the situation that I'm in. You're in a great situation. I mean, I saw the highlight of uh, I think it was that Friday game against St. Louis where Ian's coming up to the bench and you two are doing this like this dancing jig thing. I love it. I mean, you could tell you're you're, you're both smiling. I mean, is it safe to say that you know you are having? And obviously, no disrespect to Harrisburg, but are you having like some of the most fun that you are in your career in the MASL? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, winning's always going to help that, right? Um, not to say like you know we had some good teams and we had, I had some great friendships and whether they're still at Harrisburg or uh, all around the league, you know, we you keep in touch and everything. But you know, we're having a lot of fun here, and you know, like like I said, winning's fun, and we're winning, and we get to have a good time and. Um, not to say practices aren't super intense or probably the most, some of the most intense practices that I have. Like you see Ian and I dancing all the time because we're having fun, but in practice we're running our mouths and we're going, we're drawing at the bit and I make sure I'm on the other team. So he's not scoring and he always <laughs> scores too, but <laughs> I try my best, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm having, a, I'm having a lot of fun and, you know, the team is kind of, it's, it's a, it's a special team. We have a lot of personalities on this team but no personality outshines one other. It's not ego. Everybody wants the other people to get shine. We have a lot of quiet, quiet personalities. It's just like, a, it's, it's like, it's a great time, great time. So um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I, I can't complain. That's awesome. And it, and it certainly looks like it. Now you guys have played less games than everyone in the East other than Utica, but you're already four points clear of the next team. You're arguably the team to beat in the East. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, who would you say, and obviously we've had some trades going on recently, like who would you say is the biggest threat to the wave in your division? Um, I guess you have, you have to put K KC up there. We split two and two with them. Baltimore kind of beat the brakes out of us last Saturday. So um, they're really good at their arena. Um, Florida is always a tough competition. I think there's no team that's, that's e e easy, right, on the day. I think it's all about matchups. You look at Harrisburg. Harrisburg beat Florida and Baltimore. St. Louis has beaten every team. They've beaten KC, Florida, and Baltimore. You know, Baltimore has beaten Florida, beaten us. So – and then I think KC is beating St. Louis and Florida as well. So, and beating us. So everybody's beating up each other. I can't say that there's one team that's going to really, that, that really is uh, giving like our kryptonite or anything. I think uh, it's on the day and that's, that's the beauty of the East. And I think like the West as well, um, there's just a lot of parody and you just can't tell who's, who's, who's who we just have to be. Uh, we just have to be good on the day. I think every team has to be good on the day. No, oh, agreed. And I, I was looking at the schedule. I'm so bummed. I haven't had, we've chatted quite a bit, you and I. We've even done that MASL chill cave together. I've never had the opportunity and the privilege of getting to call one of your games, whether it be on Harrisburg, whether it be Milwaukee. And you guys are going to be in Southern California to play the soccers the end of the season. And I circled it on my calendar. I'm like, oh, man, we're going down to Pachanga Arena. We're going to say hi to, to Willie and Ian. And then lo and behold, we're playing Tacoma the same day. So I don't get oh, no. to see you guys live for another season. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that changes yeah. for, for, for next year. But you guys are having an outstanding season, and, and it's a lot of fun. Great job thus far. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're we're – we're working hard. I know uh, I wasn't here last year, but you can tell people people have some vengeance from last year, taking names and uh, kind of kind of saying, "Hey, listen, we're, this is not going to happen again." Um, last season, what happened last season here? So, well, I mean, you're you're a big part of that, and a big reason as to why Milwaukee is the team to beat in the East. So, you know, hats off to you, my man. Now. Just a couple of fun questions I wanted to throw at you. Again, I pulled a lot of good information from your NPSL Rochester Lancers profile. Now, most team, most people that I know growing up here in the United States have fallen in love with an international club. You know, they'll typically side with your Reals, your Barces, your Uniteds, your Chelsea's. You are a hammer. Why? I, and I, I respect West Ham United. I'll tell you a story about them off the record. But why? Why West Ham? Um, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Because I know people are going to watch this and they're going to say I'm a, I'm an EPL bandwagoner, but I'm not <laughs> like the I'm not like a Man City bandwagoner. I'm like a straight. Oh, give me a team like a dark horse. 
Um, you know, because that's fun. Those are the games that, you know, it's like you got nothing to lose, whatever. Right now, I'm a Brian Hoven Albion fan. Okay. Just I, I grew up in Brighton, New York. Um, I started a club called Brighton FC. So I just root for Brian Hoven Albion. So the, that was kind of older, the West Ham. But I've, I've gone through them all, honestly. I just... <laughs> Make a new team and 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 go um, just because it's kind of it's kind of fun. I don't know. I'm a I'm a player. I'm a players guy because teams players move. I root for the player. So um, I was a Chelsea fan for a long time, and then they sacked uh, Mourinho, and I just kind of felt like they did it unjustly, and the players kind of gave up on him. And this was kind of like before this was common. I feel like it's more common where t- players are just like, oh well, I'm giving up or whatever, and then they sack the coach, and then all is new and whatnot. So. I left. I was not a Chelsea fan. Um, I think I when Jose Mourinho went to Manchester United, I was a Manchester fan. When Jose Mourinho went to Tottenham, I'm a Tottenham fan. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Brian Holvin, Albion, that's a team. Not because they're in they're in like sixth place or whatever right now, but that's that's a team. And I think I'll stick with that team. Fair enough. They're, they got a cool story. Their owner was a professional poker player who grew up loving that club, made enough money through his poker winnings, probably some other things, and managed to buy a team. Like, what a cool rags to riches That's story awesome, that is. Not to mention, they pretty much play in, like, the Coney Island of England. You know, you got Ferris wheels and carnivals down in southern southern England. It's, what, I think, like, two hours south of London. So, cool spot, man. That's not a bad yeah. team to, to choose. Now, yeah. Your profile yet again, like I, I, I do my research. I like, I like learning about everybody that I can. That's the fun part of my job. But your, your profile said that you know your favorite soccer player was was Drogba, Didier Drogba. Now, mm-hmm. okay, that's that position. But you're obviously a keeper, so I'm not going to ask about the Drogba thing. I guess my my next question would be like, which keeper, if any at all, like had any kind of influence on your career? I probably say Mandanda. Okay. Yeah, he was high flying. I was high flying when I was a little bit skinnier. Um, so that was probably something I try to emulate with. Um yeah, he was he was he he was probably as similar as I was. He's flying in the air, aggressive. Um, so yeah, Mindanda was probably my my big guy. But I think I started like drug but before I was a keeper. Okay. Um and I remember like my parents, like African parents, they don't like you having long hair. So they would shave, like you would shave it. So I saw him like, oh, that's my guy right there. He's rebellious. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so then I was a drug fan. I, I, I said this story before. I think I said it last year. But like one year for Christmas, I uh, I didn't ask for anything besides to relax my hair. So to look like drug. And uh, I uh, so I didn't get anything for Christmas that year. And I think it was like January. And I missed the bus and I knock on my dad's door like, hey, you got to take me to school. Mm-hmm. And that's like African no no. You can't do that. <laughs> and uh, so he goes. So what? And he goes. Why is your hair not cut? And I said because. And this is like a huge Afro time. Like because I'm gonna relax it like I did for like I get for Christmas. And he's like, no way. And then he just took a clippers and just went straight. Probably like a year or two worth of like growing my hair. And he just shaved it off. And that's why. That's why I have the long hair because this is this is for my parents. If they see this, this is for you guys. But, um, yeah, so that's just me being getting back at them. <laughs> You're going to have a lot to, to say to them between your mom being third place and your visitation oh, yeah, yeah, scenarios yeah. and the hair. I mean, well, uh, you better hope they don't see this, man. Well, this, <laughs> this that means I have to I have to we have to make it to the final so I don't go home longer. Right. <laughs> so I don't make it home till May. Now I'm playing. I'm playing for my life. <laughs> no kidding. I, I would never want to anger my mom and dad either. So I, I, my fingers crossed that you make it at the very least to the finals, prolong that season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Now we've already established the fact that you don't like running, which I think is hilarious. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, I do like running, although my physique would indicate otherwise now, but you are built out of stone, my friend. like not, not many keepers, if any are built like you, like how often are you hitting the weights? Are you going to surprise and shock us and say you don't lift weights and you ain't lifting I'm gonna weights? Say, I'm going to say it. I don't lift weights. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't lift. I don't lift. Unfortunately, I just get too big. I, I gain weight very quickly. So, um, I just, I don't know. I eat, I eat and I just, I don't know. I, I, I would love to, to lift weights, but it's just it's not in the cards for me right now. Maybe when I retire, I already decided when I retire, I'm just gonna be giving it all up. Never gonna never gonna do anything. I'm just gonna play golf. 
Ah. Big, big tummy. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're too, when you retire, you're going to be too young. You should pick up your dad's favorite sport and play tennis. You got the rest of your life to be stationary. No, pickleball, pick I'm okay with. Pickleball, I'm actually okay with. Okay, yeah, and it's it's on the it's on the way up. So, um, I we talked about golfing. I'm terrible, but I love it. Like, I I, I can golf all day, and the ball just goes five yards, five yards, five yards. 15 yards, five yards. And I, you know, I have fun. I like, to, I like to, I like to challenge myself. So that's uh that is a challenging sport. I've never tried so hard, so consistently in one thing and sucked so bad. Golf is such a frustrating game. Well, it's funny. Like we have a golf, like a top golf it's called Lux here and we're going <laughs> and I go and I hit and I'll hit it like 75 yards. And everyone's like, Oh, that's not bad. You're actually doing good for your first time. I said it. Oh no! I've been playing for like two, three years. <laughs> They're like, "Oh yeah, you suck." <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. So now it's fun though. It's fun. <laughs> so, would you say that's probably your favorite thing to do when you're not playing soccer? Yeah, golfing, rollerblading. That's I like kind of my t- my two my two things that I do that kind of keep me sane. Um, I like to, you know, when I'm not coaching, not working at a camp or doing something. That's kind of what I do um in my free time well when you come out and hang out with me in california i'll happily rollerblade the uh the pier with you i i love rollerblading that was my main source of transportation back in the day so you know great minds think alike what can i say yeah i mean it's 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 a uh, definitely like a uh, underrated i know it was like really big at a point and then it's at some point everyone's like well no we're not doing this anymore and i'm i'm just bringing it back and i'm trying to bring it back i get my friends to go i i actually have an extra pair so if anybody wants to go with me when you come out to new york i got you all right i'm i'm, I'm in there was a, there was a documentary I actually watched recently i forget whether it was on youtube or on that on that free network tubi t-u-b-i but there's a whole documentary about the rise and fall of rollerblading if you like it you i would highly recommend uh, you check it out i'll send you the link i gotta go find it you're gonna love yeah. this um but we're talking about you and not rollerblading. So let's, let's stick with this. Now, your ambition at some point was to, you know, help kids go from high school, carry on their, their athletic careers to play in college. Is that another thing that Willie B is going to focus on once the retirement period comes in? Uh, I mean, I, I've in that time, I, I've started a club. Um, it's, it's like a smaller club. We've got about like 250 kids. So um, pretty good. You know, that's kind of my focus right now. Um, just trying to get it, you know, starting a club is tough. You know, the trials and tribulations, the trial and error and all the stuff you have to go through is, is tough, especially being away from the club for five months, six months. Um, so that's kind of my focus. Um, and I, I think I get my my fix of helping kids. And, you know, um, I like I like uh, my club's like a travel club. So it's not like the most competitive, but, you know, it's like teaching kids and having them develop and learning their social skills and making friends, you know, that, that's kind of my, my bigger picture. And I think from the sport that playing the sports, not, Hey, you have to, I'm, my goal is to make you a professional soccer player. Or I'm, you're going to go play for Chelsea or it's a failure. It's like, no, well, maybe you go and you play and you learn something about yourself or you learn, you make a friend like my, five best friends are from the same friends that we were together from sixth, seventh grade. So, and that would be, that'd be without the game. So the game's given them a lot for me. And I kind of look at it kind of just, can I be a service as a coach, as a mentor, as a, you know, as a, a resource to the younger kids? Um, you know, I did, I had that website a couple of years back and I kind of, it was just too much to kind of keep developing as life kind of went on. So. Well, I mean, they uh, any kid that gets the opportunity to spend any time and learn from you is certainly privileged. So nothing but love on that front, man. Now, we've, uh, we've chatted about a lot of things. You got any final words or thoughts before we let you go tonight? No, I mean, it's fun. Keep supporting the league. I think the league's doing a great, great things, and they're always making strides. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm just happy to be a part of it. And we're just – I'm just having fun. And if you ask the refs, you ask anybody that's around me or the team, we're just having fun. We're having fun at the end of the day, and um, obviously we're trying to compete. But you know, I, I like to look at it. It's like 
life isn't that serious, guys. It's not that serious, right? We're, we're here to have fun, get to play, get to entertain, um, you know, enjoy it as, as you have it. Because at, at one point, you just, you don't know when, you know, whether it's the next phone call of what situation happens, an injury or something, you got to enjoy it like, like it's your last, so... Brilliant words, words of wisdom. Willie, I thank you. I appreciate the combo. Thank you for your time. Good thank luck the rest of the season. Congrats on the success you've had so far. And I got my fingers crossed. I don't know if we're going to do another thing equivalent to the MASL Chill Cave like we did last year, but fingers crossed that it's going to be because you guys are in the finals. Uh, you play in front of a great crowd, got nothing but love from Milwaukee Wave, and obviously their supporters, some of the best fans in this league. And you know, good luck the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, if we we do do a chill case, uh, I'll see you at at the end, the ending ceremony. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we do. But we'll, we'll, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, hopefully, I get, I'm excited to watch more of these. Awesome. Well, folks, that's it. You heard it from myself. You heard it from the man, Willie B. Join us back next week as we're set to interview another player from another team from our wonderful league. And till next time, folks. We out!